That's so unexpected. Thank you very much. Your, uh, your applause is a credit to your intelligence. <laughs> you probably guess by now that I am, of course, Irish. Yeah. Well, by a, by a friend of me father's. Yeah. He's dead now. Do you know what killed me father? Drink and sex. He couldn't get either, so he shot himself. <laughs> he tried to hang himself, but he made the rope too long and broke both of his legs. Then he went down to the library in Dublin. He said, excuse me, love, do you have any books on how to commit suicide? He said, we've got a whole rack full in the corner. He came back, he said, excuse me, love, there's only one book around there. Yes, she said, they don't bring them back. <laughs> well, when the, fam when the father died, the family turned up for the wake. Do you know what a wake is? It's a bit like this, only a lot livelier. <laughs> and you don't have to pay to get in. Well, when somebody dies in Ireland, we have a great big hooli and everybody has a good time, except the principal guest. <laughs> and he's dead. And the Scots might recognise me, actually, because I come from a place you'll all have heard of. I come from Dublin. I, I, that's a city with a very dense population. <laughs> okay. no, it's lovely. I don't know if you've been. It's one of those wonderful cities, Dublin, where you go out for an evening you'll never forget. And it always ends up as a night you can't remember. Do you know why? The pubs are open all day in Dublin, except from half past two at the half past three in the afternoon, which we call the holy hour. And all the pubs shut, but the barmen are great. They let you sit in the bar till they open up again. They, and you can have a drink while you're waiting. <laughs> well, do you know, we've got fairly unusual drinking habits, the Irish. We don't like going home the same day as we went out. Uh, do you know what we call that? Alcoholic constipation. We can't pass a pub. <laughs> but always remember, Irishmen have a very good reason to drink. Irishmen drink to keep our wives good looking. <laughs> we get this bad name because of the famous Irishmen like George Best. Do you know George Best? Yes. He's not drinking anymore. He's not drinking any less. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what we call George now? We call him the genie. Every time you open a bottle, he pops up. <laughs> but you're good up with Irish humor. You know we're very simple people, the Irish. In Ireland, we think that two and three is six. You know it's five. But you worry about it, and we don't. <laughs> Do you know we're the most laid-back people in the world, the Irish? We take Valium as a stimulant. <laughs> oh, yes, given Irish and a couple of sleeping pills, he's up all night singing and dancing. And all Dublin men are workaholics. If you mention work, we get drunk. <laughs> but there is no work in Dublin, thanks be to God. I must be honest, I don't like not working, because when you're not working, you never know when you're finished. <laughs> <laughs> in Dublin, we don't have a village idiot. Everybody takes it in turns. Get his bad name. I've got a brother at Dublin University. Well, he's in a bottle in the biology department. <laughs> he's what the Irish call a premature baby. He was born before his mother got married. <laughs> Do you know what? He was born with broken fingers trying to hang on to laugh to the wedding. <laughs> what has he got? Do you know what? They've had that many shotgun weddings in Dublin. They've renamed the church Winchester Cathedral. <laughs> but he had an affair. Listen, he had an affair with his girl for ages. He's a married woman. She said, Paddy, because she knew him. She said, Paddy, she said, you don't have to use any more of them contradictive things because I can't get pregnant anymore. My husband's had a vasectomy. Well, what happened was he went in to have his tonsils removed and somebody turned the trolley around. <laughs> now, come here. She had the baby boy and he wouldn't marry her. He said, no, no, I don't like me married, love. The hours are too long. But I own a little shop in the village and I'll give you free groceries till the child is 16. And she got them every week, never failed. And the years went by and one day the little lad came in himself. Hello, Seamus. How old are you now? He said, I was 16 last Thursday. Seamus, would you go back and tell your mother, tell your mother there is no more free groceries, but when you tell her, watch the look on her face. He said, Mammy, 
the man in the shop said there's no more free grocery, but when I told you I was to watch the look on your face, well, you go back and tell your man he's not your father and watch the look on his face, she said. <laughs> But you will laugh at us for years with all the Irish guys you think we're thick, you know, eh? You do some strange things here, you know. Do you know in this country today you can ring for a pizza and it's delivered to your door in five minutes? If they don't deliver it in five minutes, you don't pay for it. But you have a heart attack and ring for an ambulance. <laughs> Two hours, that is. So listen to the Irish. If you have a heart attack, ring for a pizza. <laughs> and when it comes, ask them to drop you off at the hospital. Can you tell me, clever people, why you put a sell-by date on sour cream? <laughs> Explain that to a paddy. You spent all this money, you built a tunnel from France to England. You now turn this lovely country into a cul-de-sac. <laughs> Strange people you are, you know. You're the only people I know who takes a dog for a walk and carries it. <laughs> Marvellous, you know. We get a lot of people coming to Ireland now for different reasons. The fishing in the west of Ireland, of course, the golf and around the, around the whole of Ireland. And if you've been over to Ireland, you know in Ireland the driving is the worst driving in the world. Do you know who the worst drivers in Ireland are? The Catholics. They always pull out at the last minute. <laughs> Usually to avoid a child. <laughs> And like most Irish people, I was born a Catholic. That was quite a shock to me, parents. They were both Jewish. <laughs> I'm saving up to be one. Well, listen, I'm half Jewish and half Irish. One half wants to get drunk, the other half doesn't want to pay. <laughs> well, here we are, in this part of the world. You've got the finest comedians in the world come to this part of the world, all around Blackpool, Britain, wherever but you know, be honest, they couldn't live without Irish jokes or Jewish jokes. The most popular jokes in the world, Irish jokes, Jewish jokes. But if you get an Irish Jew, and we've got thousands, it's twice as funny. We had a Jewish doctor in Dublin called Yitzhak O'Reilly. <laughs> and he gave my father six months to live. When my father couldn't pay the bill, he gave him another six months. <laughs> Great humour, all together, man. I was in Dublin recently for my father's 103rd birthday party. He wasn't there himself, he died when he was 36. <laughs> Two years before I was born. <laughs> and you know, he died very peacefully in his sleep. The passengers weren't very happy. <laughs> but before he died, he became a Buddhist. And he really believed in reincarnation, life after death, and left all his money to himself. <laughs> he flew to Dublin from Manchester Airport on the big air fungus light. We're at the halfway mark, which is Liverpool, the capital of Ireland. <laughs> and the stewardess came around the drinks. She said to the guy next to me, would you be after having a drink? He said, I've got a thirst you could photograph. <laughs> That's Irish for very, very thirsty. She said, are you frightened of flying? Is it flying? No, crashing, terrified. <laughs> he said, excuse me, pet, do these planes crash often? She said, no, just the ones. <laughs> but I can see you're nervous and I'd like to help. She said, brandy is a great thing for the nerves. A draw, large drop of brandy, that'll do you good. There she is, there's a nice Hennessy. Get that down and you'll feel grand. Oh, I love a drop of brandy, me favourite drink. If I want another drink before we land in Ireland, what do we do? She said, no problem. There's a little button over the top of your head. And she turned to walk away. I looked across. Your man has the glass up the door and going. <laughs> <laughs> we landed at Dublin Airport. Well, very, very close to it. <laughs> and my brother picked me up at the airport. You don't know my brother, do you? No. He's a bit of a ladies' man. One bit in particular. <laughs> He's the laziest devil you ever met in your life. In fact, he was that lazy, he married a pregnant woman. <laughs> we have a name for that now. We call that a revenge baby. <laughs> Somebody had it in for it. Well, the divorce now. Well, I'm lying. You see, they don't like divorce in Ireland because 90% of the people in Ireland are Catholics. 
and only 20% are Protestants. The other 15%, they're atheists. Now, I'm an atheist myself, thanks be to God. So they're not divorced, they're separated. If I had to share the house 50-50, she wants the inside. <laughs> it was one of them houses they built in Ireland about 10 years ago. The house didn't have a chimney. They had to carry the smoke out in buckets. <laughs> Do you know what? She was terrified of using the washing machine. She said, Mick, how does that washing machine work? This morning, about seven shirts in, I pulled the chain and I haven't seen the shirt since, she says. And she says, listen, don't go into the toilet looking for the lavatory brush because I thrown the lavatory brush in the bin. We're going back to paper again. <laughs> so I'm stood in court, trying to be given some moral support. She says, Mary, before we grant the separation, we need some grounds. Was the marriage happy? It was very happy at first, but then coming back from the reception. I said he was drunk, and he said I was ugly, but he'd be sober in the morning. <laughs> he said, how about sex? She said, infrequent. He said, is that one word or two words? <laughs> how about adultery? Has he ever been unfaithful? We might have him there. I know for a fact he wasn't the father of my last child. <laughs> he said, Paddy? I got to reward your wife £35 a week. He said, thanks very much, and I'll try and send her a few quid myself. <laughs> so we're in the car. He's got a lovely car. He bought the car out of the Irish Post. The advert said, car for sale, £300, our nearest offer. He got it for £350. <laughs> and didn't we get stopped by the police? We did. He said, excuse me. What have you stopped me for? The cop said, you were speeding. He said, well, so were you. He said, you passed me. <laughs> he said, Mick, you were doing over 95 miles an hour. Well, that's a lie. Well, I haven't been in the car an hour. <laughs> so where have you been? He said, we've been to the cemetery. Oh, he said, who's dead? He said, they all are. <laughs> he said, have you had a drink? I have, but thanks very much for the offer. I had four pints of Guinness, four pints of lager, three pints of Murphy's, two halves of Guinness, and 16 brandies. He said, my God, he said, would you blow into this bag? He said, do you not believe me? He said, <laughs> what is it? He said, this is a bag. It tells me when you've had enough to drink. He said, I've got one of them at home. <laughs> He's called Brady. He said, I think you're trying to make me out to be a right Egypt. I think you're making me out to be a right fool. He said, if I called you a prat, would you arrest me? He said, I would. What have I only taught you were a prat? He said, well, I can't arrest you for what you think. He said, well, I think you're a prat. <laughs> we got into Dublin. We're trying to find a place to park at O'Connor Street the main street, he's gonna stop in front of the big hotel, the Gresham, I said, Mick, you can't park there, you'll get done. You're on double yellow lines. He said, no, I said, look at the new sign. It says, fine for parking. <laughs> I call one of the police, I said, can I park here? He said, no, you can't. You're on double yellow lines. In Ireland, one yellow line, there's no parking at all. Two yellow lines, there's no parking at all, at all. <laughs> I said, how come all the other people parked? They didn't ask. <laughs> and you've got to know in Scotland, in England, in West, all over the world, the biggest growing thing. Yes, the biggest growing thing in the world today, do you know what it is? Irish bars. They're everywhere. O'Neill's, O'Dwyer's, Scruffy Murphy's, Dirty Nelly's. They have leprechauns serving, they've got shillelaghs on the wall. Do you know what makes Irish pubs? Irish people. The crack, the humour. We talk funny in Ireland. Somebody stopped me at the door and he said, We heard all you Irish people always answer a question by asking another question. I said, Who told you that? <laughs> Great. And I went into this pub in Dublin. Well, listen to this. You'll enjoy this. 
There's a fellow lying flat out over the counter, completely unconscious. I said to the barber, I said, he's had a skinful. He said, no, he's only had the one. I said, can I have one of what he had? He went. <laughs> That's not the funny part. You noticed. There's two lads next to me eating sandwiches. The barber said, lads, you can't eat your own food in here. So they swapped. <laughs> That's not the funny part either. In the corner of the pub, they have a big jukebox, and there's a song playing. Paddy said, Mick, that's not King Cole. He said, who is it then? <laughs> he said, Paddy, how do you go on with your wife? He said, my wife's an angel. Oh, you're lucky. Mine's still alive, he said. <laughs> she said, you're an awful man, Paddy. She said, if you won the football pools, would you still love me? He said, I would, but I'd miss you. Do you know what I'm going to tell you? No. He took her out last week for tea and biscuits and she really enjoyed it. She'd never given blood before. <laughs> it was her birthday. He bought her a video recorder. She said, where'd you get the money? He said, I sold a television set. <laughs> Do you know what she got him? She gave him a video of their wedding day. He now plays it backwards to watch himself walking out of the church a single man. <laughs> now, Mary wanted an abortion. He said, it's too late, Mary. He's going to school now. <laughs> he came home from school last week. He said, Daddy, did I go on honeymoon with you? He said, you went with me, but you came back with your mother. He said, Daddy, can you make a sound like a frog? He said, no, why? He said, my mammy says when you croak, we're all going to Tenerife. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to laugh. Somebody has. He was in school the other week, and he got a smack in the gob. What's that for? The teacher says, you were copying it. I wasn't. He said, you were copying, Sean. The little boy next to you written yes for the first question, and you've written yes. For the second question, he's written no, and you've written no. For the third question, he's written I don't know, and you've written neither do I. They're copying. <laughs> They're copying. Well, she was wearing a miniskirt. It was like a pelmet. The wee lad says, please, miss, I can see your ankle from here. Get out, you little devil, and don't go back in here for a week. She threw him out of school. Ten minutes later, little fella says, please, miss, I can see your knees from where I am. Yeah, dirty little girl here. Get out and don't come back here for the one. She threw him out of the gas. And then she dropped the chalk and bent down to get it. And Sean started walking through the front door. She said, um, where are you going, Sean? He said, after what I've seen, my school days are over, he said. She was trying to teach me the art of writing poetry. She said, I'd like you all to let me a little rhyme, and the rhyme must contain the words blue and pistol. Paddy, you're first. He says, the lone ranger is a cowboy. He wears a mask of blue. He rides a horse called silver, and he's got a pistol too. That's lovely. Sit down. Mary, she said, my daddy is a policeman. He wears a suit of blue. He carries a great big truncheon, and he's got a pistol too. That's lovely. John? He said, my daddy is born idle. He swears till his face is blue. He collects his doll at 12 o'clock and he's on the pistol too. <laughs> Do you know what? He got sent home last week from school sports. He tried to cheat in the egg and spoon race. He glued the spoon to his hand. She you know the granny, me granny was 65 years of age, she went on the pill. Didn't want any more grandchildren, she said. <laughs> the grandfather started jogging when he was 55. He's now 79. We haven't a clue where he is. <laughs> but last year, didn't the granny die? She did. My granny was bedridden all her life and twice in a taxi. She drank a bottle of varnish, thinking it was Guinness. She had a horrible debt, but a lovely finish. <laughs> we said, Granny, have you thought about where you'd like to be buried? She said, I want to finish the bottle, please, God. 
and I want to throw the bottle as far as I can. You can bury me wherever the bottle lands, and we buried her on top of the wardrobe. <laughs> she was three weeks dead. My grandfather got married again. He married a toy girl. She was 78. They spent their honeymoon trying to get out of the taxi. <laughs> She's what we call in Ireland a sexually active. They made love nearly every night, nearly on Monday, <laughs> nearly on Tuesday. <laughs> then she got these things called Scandinavian sex tablets. God, they were strong. If you swallow them too slow, you get a stiff neck. <laughs> and they taste pepperminty. She took three. She gave six to be grandfather. And she woke, up, she woke up screaming, I want a man! And he woke up saying, so do I! <laughs> Lovely, that. Do you know, for an old couple, they were very romantic. They used to make love to the sound of the church bells. I think my granny would be alive today if the ice cream van hadn't gone past. <laughs> so in a lovely restaurant in Dublin last week. It's half Japanese and half Jewish called So Sumi. And then there's a little fella sitting inside the door, coughing and spluttering. He said, can you help me out? He said, I swallowed a fish bone. I said, are you choking? He said, no, I'm bloody serious. He said. <laughs> so I called the waiter over. I said, over, come here. I said, what sort of soup have you got? He said, it's bean soup. I said, what is it now? <laughs> He says, listen, I'll have the chicken soup. And he opened the door and said, one chicken soup. Hang on, you're too quick. I changed my mind. I'll have the pea soup. He said, hold that chicken and make it pea. <laughs> he said, do you want frog's leg? I know, to kick the peas off the place. But then... <laughs> well, there's two lads sat next to me eating sandwiches, you see. And one of them said to the, he said, Mary, can I have a meal? He said, she said, what do you want? She said, I want a quickie. Yeah, George, the little devil, don't speak to me like that. She said, what do you want? He said, I told you, I want a quickie. And he said, Nick, I think it's pronounced quiche. <laughs> do you know what he done? They ordered the meal, they paid for the meal, and they sneaked out without eating it. <laughs> George, the little devils. There was a couple sat beside me here, nice looking girl, nice looking fella, but all of a sudden the girl slid off her chair and slid right under the table. I said, excuse me pal, your wife has just slid under the table. He said, no, he said, my wife has just walked in. <laughs> but pubs in Ireland are great, you know, the Kraken pubs is fantastic. It was in this little pub in Dublin called O'Donoghue's Bar. They got a big sign on the bar that said, if you're an alcoholic, please phone this number. I rang, it was a North license in O'Connell Street. Hey, lovely crack, you know. There was a little fella sat in the corner, they were having his 40th birthday. The drink was flown, it was fantastic. And his pals thought they'd get him a strippergram. Now, we've had it for years, we've only just got these strippergrams now in Ireland. And this girl, she was a big girl, what we call in Ireland a hunch front. <laughs> and she sat on Paddy's knee, she said, I come to give you super sex. He said, I'll have the soup. Oh, you grand. But one great time when I was home there, my grandfather and my granny were celebrating 50 years of marriage, a great occasion. Paddy said, Mary, I want you to get you a really nice present. What would you like, Shit, I'd love to go back to the first place that you and I ever made love. He said, you mean up against the fence at the bottom of Murphy Field? I'd love that. They went back to Galway, we found the field, and the fence was still there. Oh, she said, Paddy, we couldn't come all this way and not see if the old spark was there after all these years. And they're up against the fence, and Mary's going like a fiddler's elbow. And he said, Mary, you're better now than you were 50 years ago. She said, Paddy, 50 years ago, the fence wasn't electrified, she said. <laughs> you're up to the bar, he said, can I have, he said, can I have a glass of orange? He said, still orange? Oh, yes, I haven't changed my mind that quick, he said. <laughs> and the pint of Guinness for Sean. He said, we've run out. He said, how can you run out of Guinness in Ireland? For God's sake, give me a pint of Guinness. Barman said, Sean, take the G out of gin, what's left? He said, in. 
Take the R out of Rome, what's left? He said, Rome. Now take the F out of Guinness and what's left? He said, there's no F in Guinness. <laughs> he said, that's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> he said, well, give me a pint of bitter. He said, with bread, aye, two slices. <laughs> and I'd like to buy that blonde girl a drink. The barber said, keep your money, she's a lesbian. He said, what part of Lesbonia are you from? He went in to buy a pair of shoes last week. He said to the fella, can I have a pair of shoes? The bloke said, try these on. He said, they're too tight. He said, try them with the tongue out. And then, 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 then. <laughs> Well, he said, Mick, leave them off till you get used to them. He bought the shoes that were made from tortoise shell. Took him four hours to walk out of the shop. <laughs> Down to the bus stop. The big sign said, Cue the other side. He went over the road and missed four buses. <laughs> and the bus came. It was a one man bus. And the bloke in front said, Stanley Park, single. He said, Paddy Murphy, married with four kids. He went up the stairs and said to the bloke in front, he said, excuse me, pal, could you tell me when I get to O'Connell Street? He said, keep your eye on me and get off two stops before I do. <laughs> Every time the bus stopped, the driver would shout, John Street. Next thing it was Henry Street. Then it was William Street. Paddy said, Mick, when do we get off? He said, you're waiting, your name's called. He said, You get off the bus, there's a woman stood there in O'Connell Street, 18 stone, like a Yeti in knickers. <laughs> Excuse me, she said, could you see me across the road? He said, I go on there, I'll go over and have a look. <laughs> he went into this pub, he had a piece of tarmac in his hand. He said, a pint of Guinness and one for the road. <laughs> Barman says, you don't look happy. He said, no. He said, me wife reversed the car out of the garage this morning. What's wrong with that? He said, I reversed it into the garage last night. <laughs> he going home that night, and she said, we wanted fish and chips. He went into the shop, he said, fish and chips twice. The bloke said, I heard you the first time. <laughs> he got home, do you know what he done? He poured two cans of Guinness down the toilet and said to his wife, that'll save me getting up during the night. And his phone rang. He said, hello. I said, hello, is that Dublin double two double two? He said, no, this is Dublin two 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 two. <laughs> Rogue said, did I wake you up? He said, no, I had to come down to answer the phone. <laughs> he was walking up the front, he was walking up the street, up the street, the main street last week, walking up the street with the front door under his arm. His wife says, where are you going with that? He said, I'm going to have the lock fixed. <laughs> She said, how will I get in? He said, I've left the window open. <laughs> we did it to a shop. He said, a pound of Irish bacon, please. The girl says, lean back. He said, right, you are. <laughs> and a packet of nails. How long do you want them? I want to keep them, he said. <laughs> and a tin of paint. She said, well, I put it in a bag. He said, no, leave it in the tin. He went to the doctor. He said, doctor, I've got an awful pain in my foot. The doctor says, gout. He said, I've only just come in. <laughs> he said, no, Mick, the pain is caused by gout. It's old age. He said, how come my other leg is the same age and it doesn't hurt? <laughs> he says, you'll never work again. What's wrong? You're a lazy get. <laughs> and he was sitting watching the television on Friday. And the boy said, Mick, I'm going to do some washing. Would you go out and see if it's raining? He said, call the dog in, see if the dog's wet. <laughs> the little Irish setter, he was sitting in front of the fire chewing a bowl. When I got up, one of his legs dropped off. <laughs> and he was watching the football match on Saturday, threw a bottle at the referee, smashed the television set. <laughs> he was coming home the pub on Friday. He's walking along the bank of the River Liffey, and he saved the man from drowning. He said, how did you come to fall in? 
said, I didn't come to fall in. I can't to fish in that fell in. Fell in, he said. What's your name? And I'll tell your mother. He said, my mother knows my name. <laughs> he called the house and the phone is ringing. He said, hello? If I said, hello, is that 777777? Yes. He said, could you dial 999 for me? I've got my fingers stuck in the seven. All simple. So knock on his door, he opened the door, there was a policeman there. He said, Mick, on your way back from the pub tonight, did you save a man from drowning in the river? He said, I did. He said, I got bad news for you. He hung himself. He said, no, he didn't. I put him up there to dry. <laughs> people, are, people always ask me, what makes the Irish laugh? We have a funny sense of humor, you know. You can tell a joke in Blackpool, they wouldn't laugh in Dublin. They wouldn't hear it. <laughs> they were getting a quote to paint Blackpool to our gold. They got three quotes. The fourth call came a little Welsh company, and the Merrill Blackpool brought them in separately. That's one at a time. <laughs> he said to the Welsh lad, what's your quote? He said, we'd like £3,000. He said, can we have a breakdown of the figures? He said, we'd like £1,000 labour, £1,000 material, and £1,000 profit. We'll let you know in two days. The second figure was an English firm. He said, we'd be lucky for 6000 He said, how do you break down to 6000 We'd like £2,000 labour. 2,000 pounds material and 2,000 profit. We let it on two days. The third firm was Irish. He said, we be looking for 9,000. He said, how do you break down the 9,000? Well, he said, 3,000 for you. <laughs> the 3,000 for me, and we'll give the job to the Welsh fella. You've got things in England we don't have in Ireland. Queers. No, no, an Irish queer is somebody who prefers women to drink. <laughs> We're not gay in Ireland. We're not even bloody happy. They say one in four people in England is queer. So that means if you're sitting with three friends... <laughs> if you're sure there, all right, it's yourself. I thought, listen, how would you spot a rear gunner? I thought, I'll ask me pal Mick. Mick's very clever. He's a gynecologist. He wanted to be a brain surgeon, but he wasn't tall enough. <laughs> he was a very clever gynecologist, as he once painted our hall stairs and landing through the letterbox. You know, he's just been struck off the medical resident in Ireland. He tried to cure a haemophiliac or acupuncture. <laughs> I says, Mick, I said, how would I know if an Englishman was queer? Is it very easy? You kiss him full on the lips. If he closes his eyes, he's a queer. If he closes yours, he isn't. <laughs> I said, have you ever kissed a queer yourself? He said, no, but I kissed a fellow who did. That makes you think, is he on the turn? I think you call it ACDC. In Ireland, we call it a pat on the back. <laughs> he was married to the ugliest woman in Ireland. This woman had marks all over her body where she'd been touched with barge poles. <laughs> she had had her face lifted that many times she had a beard. The only reason he married her was he was a fisherman and she had worms. <laughs> and they fought morning, noon and night. And that's nearly all day in Ireland. <laughs> Do you know he tried to murder his wife three months ago? He tried to pull her off a cliff. <laughs> but the worst thing he ever done was he wrote Protestant on her back and sent her up to Falls Road in Belfast. She came back with £200 because he couldn't spell Protestant. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And she was English. She only married him because she didn't know that a 26-inch Murphy was a television set. 
And when he met her, he said, how are you, love? Would you like a drink? Oh, she says, I guess I'll have a brandy. He said, well, guess again. <laughs> she said, would you like to sleep with me for the tenor? I'd love to sleep with you. At the moment, I don't feel very tired. <laughs> but I could do with the money. <laughs> she sent it to a chemist to buy something you can't buy in Ireland. He said, Mary, have you got a pack of the contradictives? <laughs> She said, small or large? Oh, he said, large. So she gave him a box of 500. <laughs> he said, did he come in smaller? We got them in trees. How much? He said, 75 pence plus tax. Oh, I don't want the tax. I'll glue them on. <laughs> Do you know me sister? She's got three kids. She won't have the fourth. She's terrified to have the fourth child. She's read in some magazine that every fourth child born in the world is Chinese. <laughs> she said, I'm not cooking rice for one. <laughs> the first baby was very small. It only weighed about one pound, three ounces when it was born. We weren't expecting much. She'd only be married three months, you see. But we thought if it was a girl, we'll call it Denise. If it was a boy, we'll call it the nephew. <laughs> but when she was very heavy pregnant, about seven months pregnant, like a week overdue, <laughs> what the Irish call a dope carrier. <laughs> My brother-in-law, Seamus, now he's Irish as well. In fact, he's very Irish. He thinks twice before he says nothing. Do you know he fell asleep with his head under the pillow and the fairies took all his teeth out? <laughs> he said, never again. <laughs> He's got a great hobby. Do you know what he does? He breeds pit bull terriers for racing. <laughs> oh, they're not very fast, but they're bloody bad losers. And he's now put a sign on his gate outside the house. The sign says, beware of the canary. I said, what does the canary do? He said, he whistles for the dog. <laughs> I know. I tell you something, girls. He thought it was a great lover till he found that his wife had asthma. Well, when she was very heavy pregnant, he rang up the maternity hospital. Hello, he said, listen, could you send an ambulance quick? He said, my wife is pregnant and she's gone into labor. The doctor said, is this her first baby? He said, no, this is her husband. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Murphy, we're thrilled. Your wife's had a baby boy. We think she'd been using fertility pills. We think the boy could you bring his back? So do you know what he done? Go on, guess I won't look. <laughs> he went for a drink, got about three, six, three or six pints down. He said, he rang back, he said, is this Mr. Murphy again? How is Mrs. Murphy now? Mr. Murphy is now twins. A little boy and a little girl. Oh, that's grand twins. Are they identical? He said, well, the boy is, but the girl isn't. <laughs> Ring is back, there's more. He rang back, he said, it's me again. How is Mrs. Mr. Murphy? God love his triplets now. Three of them. Two boys and a girl, and they're the right pair if ever I saw one. <laughs> the next time I rang back, wasn't he drunk? He was. And didn't he miss Doyle? He did. And he got through my mistake to the cricket scoreboard. <laughs> and he did enjoy The voice says they're all there for 120. And the last one's a duck. <laughs> There's a great program on Irish television now. I think you get it over here at ITV. It's called Take Your Pick. Have you seen that? Uh, there's one coming on live in Dublin. It's very funny. You watch it. Des O'Connor has a lovely couple on the first show. Right, Mary, it's three questions for the key to the box. First question, what has a woman got two of that a man likes to kiss? She said, lips, you're off to a grand start. We're thrilled. Second question, what has a man got two of that a woman likes to hold? Oh, that'd be hands. You're doing grand. You've got two right. There's one more to go. He said, Paddy, 
Would you like to give your wife a hand with the last question? He said, no, thanks, I got the first two wrong. <laughs>